Hello everybody. So if you all remember last week we talked about what we need to do before starting a union. We talked about how we need to get legal counsel to make sure we're not violating any rules and then we also talked to a consultant. So having done all of that, today we're going to be talking about what we need to do before we actually start a union. So before we start this union, there's two ways we can reach out to employers. Now, a union organization, um, the organizer of the union, can either reach out to employees and call them, or employees can just call the union if they want. So there's two processes as far as getting employees into a union and starting a union campaign. So the first process is a card check process. So with the card check process, this is where we basically just get signatures from employees. And employees, when they sign these cards, they're showing us that they want to be a part of the union. This is very important. We want our employees to show us that they want to represent our union. So we need to get as many signatures as we can. We need at least 50% of signatures. Once we got signatures, then we can decide if the employees can be a part of the union. The next thing we can do if our employees say no to the card check process. Now the, with the card check, it's just we're just getting signatures. There's no election. We're just getting signatures from people and if we have a lot of signatures, we can start our union. So our next process that we can do if the card check doesn't work is the secret ballot process. Now this is where we take the signatures that we've gotten from our employees and we ask the National Labor Relations Board to hold an election. So we have to get a petition. Now once our petition is filed, this is very important because we are very limited to what we can say and do. Because if we say the wrong thing, if we violate any regulations, this is known as unfair labor practice and if we do any of this, if we say something we're not supposed to, we can get in a lot of trouble because the union can complain to the National Labor Relations Board and that is a big problem. So we have to be very careful with what we say because as managers this is very important. So. After we get our petition, then the NLRB, or the National Labor Relations Board, will hold an election. And we need at least 50% of votes. And then we wait to find out if we won the election. So before we start our union, there's certain steps we need to take. But before I get to that, one thing that we have to do is talk to our coworkers, talk to our staff and see what they think about starting a union and ask them questions and ask them what they think and then we can we can get started. So our first step is to form a committee. So when we form a committee, we need to find committee members who are willing to be a part of a committee. We need to identify who our leaders are, we need to train them and once we find a committee, once we find committee members, they are trained immediately. So they're trained on many different things. So they're trained on union policies. Um, they're trained on everything that they need to know all about unionization. So they are taught everything that they need to know from A to Z. So this is very important that they are trained and they have experience. They also need to gather information. Now certain information that needs to be gathered 
by our committee members are things like workplace structure. So basically like the tasks of the workplace, the different departments that the company has, um, different shifts, things like that. So then we have employee information. That's another thing that they need to get. So employee information is things like names of employees, um, job titles, um, when, you know, what department they work in, uh, when they work, like their hours, things like that. Then they need employer information such as um, union history, uh, information about customers, um, company names, things like that. So once we have our committee, step two is to start an issues program. So we need a solid issues program. So this is where we identify the issues within our union. So we identify what issues we're going to deal with and we also talk about what improvements we want to have. So how we're going to solve these issues, what solutions are we going to offer to our employees. So we have an issues program and this issues program is very important. It has to be very solid and it has to be very good in order for us to win the election. So the next step is to sign people up. Now when we sign people up we basically just give out cards, we have people sign them, we get as many signatures as we can and then those signatures are used for the election. So step four is to do what we can to win the election. So in order to win the election, we need to have a very good committee. We need like an excellent committee. And we also need an excellent issues program. Our issues program has to be very solid. It has to be clear. Um, it has to be clear as to what the issues are that we deal with and the solutions and the improvements that we offer. So in order for us to win the union, that's very important. Now, this can take up to a few weeks for us to win or to find out if we won or for the election to go through. So all of this whole process could take up to a few weeks. So it's very important that we allow the union campaign to continue and to get stronger just in case there's any other problems. So just because we're waiting for the next step, that does not mean that the union campaign can just stop. We need to allow it to continue. So after winning the election, after we found out whether or not we won the election, if we did, now if we won the election, our union has been started, so we are able to bargain with our employees. Now if we lose the election, this is a whole different story because now we can go to other unions, we can start another election, there's many things we can do, but if we win, we can start bargaining with our employees. Now, there are certain consequences to certain offenses. So if, say, for example, we violate any rules. Um, if it's something that's mm, like mild, like a mild offense, the employers can just stop the union. If it's severe enough, the we can just win the election by default. So we have to be very careful that we don't violate anything because they could just have the election win by default or else the whole union itself can just stop if the action is severe enough. So we want to make sure we don't violate anything. Now another thing, now their final step is to negotiate a contract. And a contract is basically an agreement between the employer and the union. So this is basically, this should cover everything that the employer needs to know from A to Z, such as wages, um, any rules and regulations that we have, issues that we deal with, anything that they need to know. This is very important. We need a contract. 
and we need to make sure that our contract is signed by our employers. So that does it for this presentation and I hope everybody enjoyed and I hope that you all have a good rest of your day and my references will be in the description box down below. Alright, have a nice day everybody.